Moving path points to do a morph sucks. There's a time and place, but there is another way. Signed distance fields. This isn't going to be a whole SDF explainer, but it will be an After Effects morph tutorial that only needs an alpha channel. We'll also layer styles, but more on that later. We're going to build a three layer setup where the first precomp layer contains the shapes we want to morph, the second precomp generates the signed distance fields, and the third takes those fields and makes them into shapes that we can do real cool stuff with. Now I've already got our two shapes in their own comps, so let's make the assigned distance fields. Let's take our source, make a new comp, and name it STF1. Start by making a white solid for the background, and then on our source layer, go to Layer, Layer Styles, Outer Glow, and Layer, Layer Styles, Inner Glow. We have to use Layer Styles for one reason, and that reason is this technique, Precise. We wouldn't actually have to precomp as much if not for Layer Styles being later in the order of operations. Anyways, let's focus on the Outer Glow. Set the blend mode to normal and opacity to 100%. Make sure that this is precise. Uh, color to gradient. It's a little bit easier to see what's going on if we raise the size. In a sign distance field, we want our edge to be 50% gray and everything outside of it to be lighter and everything inside of it to be darker. So set the inside edge to 50% gray and the outside edge to 100% white. Now for the outer glow. Same thing. Blend mode normal, opacity 100%, precise technique. I'm going to make the size bigger so we can see what's going on and change color to gradient. Inside this gradient, we want our inner edge to be 50% gray, same as before, but we want the inside of our gradient to be darker, so set that to black. Now what should our size be set to? We want the most bandwidth for our sign distance field, so we want the innermost part of this field to just touch black. You can see in the info panel here, I'm going to adjust the size until this just touches zero at the inside, uh, it's a little bit high here, so 90, 90 seems to work perfectly. Just make sure to copy that size over to the outer glow to ensure a consistent gradient, and that's that field done. Technically, signed distance fields are positive on one side of the edge and negative on the other, hence the signed bit of the signed distance field, uh, but we're using middle gray and lighter and darker for that because we're in After Effects. Feel free to duplicate the SDF generator and replace the source with the other shape precomp. Just be sure to check the black levels and adjust the field size accordingly. Now's a good time to check that our project is in at least 16 bits per channel because we need that extra resolution in our fields to avoid aliasing. Finally, we can make our morph. Let's take our sign distance field comps and make a new composition called Morph SDF. On top of our fields, let's make a new adjustment layer and call it Threshold. Then add the Threshold effect. You should be able to see the original shape extracted out of the field, as long as this is set to 50% gray. If we check our other shaped SDF, we should be able to see that shape too. Anything under this adjustment layer will be considered a part of the fields. Before we morph, let's quickly do some housekeeping and get this shape on alpha. Make a new adjustment layer and name it alpha. Add the inverter effect to get our shape to be white, then add a shift channels and set alpha to luminance. Now if your shape is a bit crunchy, this is where you should put anti-aliasing. I'm going to throw a fast approximate anti-aliasing from Plugin Everything here, which is a free plugin, but you can use a tiny blur or anything else you want. Back to the morph, making it is dead simple. On one of our SDF layers, add a keyframe for opacity, then fade it out. That's it. That's the technique. If you're confused how that works, let's take a look at the fields themselves. As we fade between the two fields, the 50% gray mark moves between the two shapes. Uh, let me add an extract so you can see those fields a little bit better. Solid composite. When we fade between the fields, the 50% gray is no longer where the outline of the shape is, it is at an intermediate point between the top field and the bottom field. So as we fade between them, the 50% gray line moves. This is one of those things where it doesn't really matter if you don't really understand how it works, you just know that it does. The best part about this is it works on any alpha channel. Let's go back and change our sources. Let's add a hexagon to source 1. And in source two, let's add a rounded rectangle. As long as we check our black levels in our SDFs, in this one, the inner glow needs to be much bigger. 175, 175, and this one, uh, glow, 160 it is. Now back in our morph comp, the morph still works flawlessly with our new shapes. Well, maybe not flawlessly, uh, but it's not half bad for a morph you didn't have to adjust any path points to make. By adding just a quick set of curves can hide a lot of crimes. 
Now we don't have to do a morph all at once. Anything we do in the fields under the threshold will be converted into a shape. So let's make this a directional morph. First, let's reset our opacity keyframes, then add a linear wipe to our top field. By quickly adding keyframes, it looks like just any other linear wipe. But when we add feathering, it makes the morph move from left to right. How quick the morph happens is determined by the feather and the keyframes in between. And because this is just a normal effect, we could set this to go from right to left just by changing the wipe angle. This is all this effect really is. It's just a linear wipe between two fields. But because the threshold effect is really just an if statement, this renders super fast. All of this based on just the alpha channel of our source layers and a few effects. If we add some masks, you can imagine just how art directable this morph really is. Plus, if you wanted to extend this morph into other objects, you can just add more field layers, like this example I have. If we were just adjusting path points, this effect would be really hard to achieve. But in our sine distance field morph, it's just a series of linear wipes on a field of different objects. Plus, because it's all procedural, let's say I didn't like this metal source, I can just swap it out for something that makes a little bit more sense. And then back in our main comp, as long as I turn these back on, I've got a whole new shape in there and I didn't have to worry about adjusting path points. Another thing you can do with this technique is morph between type layers. Morphing between different font weights is super popular right now, but not all fonts support animating that property. We can animate it with any typeface or timing that we want by creating a thin sign distance field and a thick sign distance field and morphing between them. For some typefaces and some words, you need to adjust the tracking between thick and thin uh, because the letters don't fall in the same locations. You can imagine setting up an essential properties rig to change most of these parameters to create a type bold template that you can use wherever you want. And we can also use our fields to make some pretty art directable things. Because anything under this adjustment layer is considered a field, and anything in our fields that is greater than 50% gray is considered outside, we can use a white solid to have some fun. I can make a new white solid and put it underneath the field so it gets considered a part of the field. Then I'm going to make a mask and up the feathering. With the threshold on, just by moving this mask, we can make some pretty cool effects. We can adjust the shape to our liking, round this out. It's actually pretty fun, I'll, I'm not going to lie, just moving this around and seeing what we can make. Ooh, I wonder what this would look like with a star. Uh, is this the one we made a star in? Yeah, it is. Cool. Let's go back to... We can make some pretty cool stuff. Sorry, I can get distracted by just messing with this. It's so fast and you can really adjust it however you want. Plus, if our morph is still active with the opacity keyframes, our mask can even interact with this morph. If I turn off the threshold, you can see what we're really doing. It's not really anything amazing, but when it's treated as a field, we can get some pretty amazing effect. Plus, it's not just a white solid. If we add a black solid, we can define places inside this field that are inside the shape. I'll admit this is getting a little out of hand, but you can see there are a lot of options. You can see another way to use this technique in this example. Getting the spokes of the sun to grow was dead simple. Our sun source is just these pips rotating around, which generates this field. Then in our morph comp, I've added this white solid, which is really nothing that special, but it asks as a, essentially a mask in the field. Just by affecting the fields, you can do some pretty cool effects. You can tweak any rough parts of any morph or animation by adding simple masks with keyframes. You could even do like a cool liquidy water effect uh, or even put textures. Ooh, you know, I can show you this quickly. If you overlay fractal noise onto your fields, you can get some pretty cool organic effects. This renders way faster than turbulent displace. Anyways, there's always a time and place for converting a shape to mask and precisely controlling how an object morphs, but that time isn't always. Sometimes you need a quick and dirtier morph, and that's where science distance fields can help. If you make anything with this technique, send it my way. I'm at JC Tecklenburg on most places online. Bye!